The Netflix horror anthology series Cabinet of Curiosities was made by Guillermo del Toro and is apparently based on his accomplished short story of the same name. Eight episodes make up the first season, with each episode conveying a distinct story. The first episode of the series, Lot 36, is a teleplay that Del Toro and Regina Carrado co-wrote based on Del Toro's own story. In Lot 36, Nick Tim Blake Nelson, a frustrated and unfortunate storage hunter, places the winning bid for the title storage unit. He is unaware that the aforementioned team has sinister secrets. The first Gulf War's early years serve as a backdrop for the storyline, adding another level of meaning to the tale. Here is all the information you need to know about the first episode of Cabinet of Curiosities and how it ends. Spoilers ahead. The episode begins with Del Toro himself serving as the host, inviting the audience into his Cabinet of Curiosities. He plays the same role that Rod Serling does in The Twilight Zone serving not necessarily as a narrator, but as an usher, guiding the people to the doorway beyond which lies all the mysteries. As Bush Sr. talks about the Allied forces attacking military bases in Iraq and Kuwait and the New World Order, an elderly man has a heart attack while butchering some unknown animal, it has canines and what distinctively looks like the roots of the horns and eyes. The focus of the narrative then shifts to Nick. He is a war vet. Given his age and the timeline, he likely fought in Vietnam, an experience that has left him bitter, angry, and with injuries that are going to last his lifetime. He directs his frustration about governmental apathy and failure in life toward the immigrants. He is one of those Americans who listen to conservative radio hosts and bob their heads and feels that the system has victimized him, despite belonging to the group of the racial majority. Nick is also under a mountain of debt and knows he will be in serious trouble if he steps back over the district lines. But desperate times call for desperate measures. He wins the bit on Lot 36, which originally belonged to the elderly man from earlier. Nick finds a photo book that reveals that the man had ties with the Third Reich. But what catches his interest is a gold candelabra, along with two exquisite chairs, a decoration made out of human hair, and a seance table with real inlay. Are Nick and Roland dead? When he asks Eddie, the owner of the storage facility, for contacts after realizing what he has discovered in the storage could be of significant worth, Eddie refers him to Agatha. Roland also meets Nick through Agatha. Agatha expresses genuine interest in the seance table, despite her desire to purchase the other items. The table's hidden chamber opens when she unintentionally presses a button, exposing three books. Liber Primus Demonia, Liber Secundus Symbolia, and Liber Tertius Perlipsi. Roland mentions the fourth book, Liber Quartus Sacramentum, when he first comes. Nick leads the other man to the storage area after Roland guarantees him $300,000 if the fourth book is discovered. As they begin to look, Nick realizes that his initial assumption about the total area of the unit was accurate. A room inside a room was created by the previous owner using artificial walls inside the unit. Through one of the walls, Nick and Roland are able to enter a small passageway. They immediately notice a terrible scent. Before entering a smaller room, where they discover the skeletal form of what once was a woman, they notice crosses decorating the walls. The demon that is wriggling around inside her skull has eaten away her face, leaving nothing behind. When Nick notices the fourth book, he disregards Roland's advice and steps inside the floor's painted pentagon to break the seal. Roland is devoured by the monster after it awakens. Nick reaches the door in his attempt to leave. But Amelia, the woman who used to rent another lot that Nick now has access to, shuts the door. Ironically, she uses the same lock Nick earlier gave her, instead of allowing her to enter the lot and retrieve the things that might hold sentimental value. Nick becomes a victim of his own greed and prejudice. He is subsequently devoured by the entity, if he had listened to Roland, he would have survived. If he had been kinder to Amelia, he would have also survived. What happened to Dot E. Wilmer? The former owner of the property's sister was Dot E. Wilmer. They came from a family who produced arms for the Nazis. They came to America after the war. The family's misfit was the owner of the apartment. He burnt away the family riches and lived a life of bitterness and resentment. The show here gently establishes a relationship between Nick and this man. 
it is inferred that the proprietor summoned the demon using the books and the seance table before offering Dati as a vessel. He deceived the entity, nonetheless, and imprisoned it in the pentagram. Most likely related to his visitor, as well as the food he brought in, was the strange ritual the owner carried out each time he entered the unit. The ceremony is finished when Nick breaches the seal, as seen by the appearance of flames in Liber Quartus Sacramentum. The devil is now confined to earth. Its first victims are Nick and Roland, but they won't be the last.